Did you ever notice that the religious insist on shifting the burden of proof? I mean, no, really? Why would they do that? They can really do nothing else because they lack the mental capacity or the moral fortitude to simply admit to their own failures. So, when you look around, you get something like this. I mean, how delusional can you be? Well, let's go find out. It's going to go farther than you thought it possibly could. So let's not dally. So today, we're going to look at a short video by the laughably named Think Institute. I mean, these people clearly have no idea what rational thought is, or they wouldn't keep making such utter fools of themselves and making videos like this. Yet, this is pretty much what we've come to expect from the religious these days. When they can't come up with anything credible, well, they just throw a childish fit and pretend that the rules don't apply to them. We're right because we're right. We can't be wrong because we're right. No, you're complete idiots. That's the simple truth. So here, once again, is the proof. I'll say quickly okay. that when you mentioned that uh, the flying spaghetti monster or whatever, like when I heard yeah. that argument and thought about it a little bit, I, don't know, I think I heard it a year ago or something, but really like, cause then they say like, well, we don't have to prove there's a God because if, if who's ever making basically this statement is at the burden of proof, who's ever making the positive statement, but really it's no, it's who's ever making the more absurd statement. And so in that case, then you could just go back to, well, actually I would say you're making the more absurd statement saying there's not a God. Then no surprise. You don't comprehend basic logic. You had it right up front, but the religious can't handle that. Therefore, they just make shit up and play make-believe just like they do with all of their beliefs. The burden of proof refers to the person making the positive statement. If you're saying, there is a God, then you have to prove it. Likewise, if you say, there is no God, then you also incur the burden of proof. Of course, the religious, not being able to handle that, will often simply assert that atheists are saying that there are no gods, but the number of atheists that I see who actually say that, it is so small as to be utterly irrelevant. We're not saying there are no gods. We're saying, you guys haven't convinced us that there are. And yes, when I see atheists saying that they know there are no gods, as I did recently over on Reddit, I tell them flat out that they have the burden of proof too. I'm not playing favorites. Knowledge requires evidence. It requires that you back your shit up. If you're going to be claiming knowledge, you need to be able to prove that you have some kind of a credible basis from which to speak. Go ahead. Stop being a dumbass. Yeah, and Johnny, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that even one step further because even the idea of absurdity presupposes a standard of reasonableness. Well, since you're now out in the weeds somewhere arguing nonsense, none of this really matters. You're just wrong. But what else is new? Any positive claim that is made, any positive claim, you must be able to demonstrate that they are, in fact, reasonable to accept. Now, some like saying that someone got a new puppy, that's so mundane and clearly demonstrable that we might not expect them to actually trot the dog out. It's known that people do get dogs. There are dogs. We can prove there are dogs. We can prove that people get puppies. It's not an extraordinary claim. Now, if they said that they owned a three-headed dog, that's another matter entirely. I'd want to see it. If they said they got a dragon, yeah, my standard of evidence is going to go way up because these are not reasonable mundane claims. That's why when you say that there's a god of some sort, you need to back that shit up with something significant because no one, 
no one has ever objectively demonstrated that a god exists, at least so far as I've ever seen, in human history. And that makes it an extraordinary claim, and thus it needs a lot of evidence to back it up. It needs a whole hell of a lot more than just your say-so, and that's kind of all these people ever have. Someone who says that a specific god can't exist, well, that also requires proof. How do you know that, and how have you tested it objectively to see if your claim is actually so? Now, it might be as simple as saying that said deity has mutually contradictory, logically impossible set of characteristics, and thus said deity cannot exist as described. And that's fine, I'll go with that. However, people who say that absolutely no gods of any kind anywhere can possibly exist, period, that's going to require a lot more evidence, and frankly, I don't think anybody can do it, any more than the religious seem capable of proving anything, anything at all. And that's why they lie. Sure. And, and the atheist doesn't get to judge what's more or less absurd. Neither do you, because absurdity has nothing at all to do with the burden of proof. Nowhere in any definition of the burden of proof can I find the word absurd listed at all. But here's the thing. They already know that they're hosed. They know that they can't provide any evidence of any kind for the actual existence of any deity whatsoever, which is why they heft the goalposts up on their shoulders and run around the field with them. If they actually use logic as it's written, they're toast. They really are. They know they're toast, and that's why they have to be dishonest about it. And this is yet another example of what kind of lying sacks of shit the religious actually are. We see that they know where the burden lies. They know what they need to do, but because they can't, and they refuse to give up on these unjustified beliefs, they're happy to just lie about it, and they hope that nobody notices. I'm sorry, I really am, but... We notice. We all do. You've just done this to yourselves. Because they have no ultimate reference point. Remember, the atheist says there's no God. Yeah, really? Citation fucking needed. Please find one place where I have ever said that there is no God. Go ahead, because I've got a wealth of material online. Feel free to go through absolutely all of it and prove me wrong because I'm happy to wait. Go right ahead. They won't be able to, and they won't even try, because they know they're full of shit, just like everybody else does. They're just so delusional, because they're running on pure emotion and absolutely zero intellect. They don't care if they're right or wrong, so long as they get to feel good. So much for not bearing false witness, right? I guess the Ten Commandments are irrelevant, or they're just stupid. Pick one. So there is no there is no ultimate reference, ultimate reference point by which we judge what's absurd and what's not. I'm going to say the burden of proof, this idea that only Christians have the burden of proof. It, don't ever, 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 please don't ever buy into that. That is that is you give that up. You are giving away the farm. But of course, nobody ever actually says that, do they? Well, nobody but you idiots. Anyone making a positive claim about reality, they bear the burden of proof to back it up. The more extreme the claim, the more substantial the evidence needs to be. Now, clearly, Christians are making a claim that there is a God. It's inherent in their belief system. The fact that they say, I believe in God, is an inherent claim that God exists. You can't just do that and say, well, I believe in Harry Potter. You don't, because you don't think Harry Potter exists, or at least I hope you don't. Therefore, Christians do need to back that up. If you can find atheists who claim that there are no gods, and I mean actually, directly, demonstrably making that claim in those words, then yeah, absolutely, hold them equally accountable. I'm totally with you on that. Yet these people are so busy bullshitting their audience because their entire belief system is, in fact, bullshit, and the distinct lack of anything remotely resembling honesty is really pretty telling. 
Because on what possible ground would the atheist judge who has the burden of proof? What, what, what rule book is he playing from? Basic logic. The burden of proof is usually on the person who brings a claim in a dispute, and it's often associated with the Latin maxim, which says the necessity of proof always lies with the person who lays charges. If you're going to make a claim, it rests entirely on your shoulders to back that claim up and show that it's reasonable and rational to hold that position. This is true in the courtroom as much as it is in any logical situation. And it's just a shame that you people don't comprehend how basic logic works. Maybe that's because all of your beliefs are so absurdly nonsensical and illogical. Maybe you ought to do something about that. No, no, no. The Christian, it's against the rules for the atheist to have the burden of proof. Says who? Absolutely nobody. Nobody at all. Anyone, no matter what side, who makes a positive claim about the nature of reality, they bear the burden of proof to back that up. If you don't like it, stop making positive claims. It's really not that hard. All you have to do is stop being a complete jackass. Give it a shot. By what standard, man? The burden of proof. If anybody's got a burden of proof, it's both. Anybody who's making any claim about anything should be able to back it up. Then, by all means, show that atheists are actually making a positive claim. Go ahead. Provide evidence that you are correct. You know, direct, demonstrable quotations provided in context from whatever atheist you happen to be speaking to at the moment. That should do the trick. And I offer myself up. Go right ahead. Show me where I have ever said that there are no gods, period. Feel free. And you won't because you can't, and everybody knows it. This is just a defense mechanism for the religious. They're in an untenable position, and they know it. They can't prove a damn thing. In fact, they've been pushing those goalposts around for a thousand years. They keep reinventing their deities making it more and more impossible to even evaluate their claims rationally, but they also don't want to be the ones in the hot seat all the time. Therefore, they simply invent a straw man and spend their time whining about it when the overwhelming majority of atheists objectively do not do what they desperately need them to do. They are just shifting the burden of proof for a reason. Because they can't be caught red-handed with their demonstrably unclothed imaginary emperor. They just can't prove a thing. And they want people to stop asking. No, we're not going to stop until you either come up with something rational, or you admit that you've got nothing. Pick one! We're not going away otherwise. Cool. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that burden of proof deal. And, and you know, I, I have atheists tell me all the time, you're shifting the burden of proof from what to what, man? You live in a, a shiftless, formless, shapeless universe about which you can know nothing, and yet you're making these hyper rationalistic statements about all of reality. And there are these rules out there about who has the burden of proof. I don't think so. Well, you don't think, and that's kind of the problem. People are pointing out the clear and obvious problems that you have, and you're just shaking your head like a two-year-old going, Nuh-uh. I say this a lot around here, but here we go again. There is one and only one standard, and if you refuse to come up to that standard, you're just proving yourself to be a complete imbecile. That's not exactly a surprise, and this is why religion is becoming such a laughingstock in the modern world. I mean, it always was, but now we're figuring this shit out. Meet the standard or admit you failed. Pick one. This whole thing is just getting ridiculous, and you're making complete and utter fools of yourself on the internet every time you pull this crap. The Think Institute indeed. 
How about you show that you actually know how to think? How about you show that you have the slightest clue how rational discourse actually works? Yeah, I'm not going to be holding my breath. I'm not playing out of your rule book. I reject it out of hand. No, if you're rejecting my Bible, I'm rejecting whatever your rule book is about burden of proof. You're not God. At least, at least my rule book is written by God. You don't even claim that yours is written by God. It's just the way things are. I don't think so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why Christianity is such a fucking joke. It's a bunch of children who think they get to play by their own rules and discard reality when reality becomes inconvenient. Yeah, sorry, you're just wrong. The whole reason that we have logic in the first place is to weed out bad ideas and incoherent beliefs. But when the ones with the bad ideas and the incoherent beliefs think that they can simply toss aside the rational mechanisms just because they can't meet them, that just proves that they're the ones with the problems. It's not us. It's them. Because these people are dishonest, stupid, irrational idiots. That's what these people are. It's no surprise that they continue to just demonstrate how uneducated and irrational they happen to be. Then they hide behind nonsensical names like the uh, Think Institute when it's very, very clear they're incapable of actually thinking. But yeah, what else is new, right? It's all these people are capable of. It's why they're losing. It's why religion in the West is dying such a slow and painful death. And that's a very, very good thing.